While you charge headlong into the fray of battle, we allow the enemy to make the first mistake. When you rely on fury to carry you through a bloody melee, we read our foe's stance and strike with a single deadly blow. For one strike, one barrage, is all we need. Brother Malavec. Hey everybody and welcome back to another video and if, and if you didn't know I added channel memberships and we have a Patreon too. But today we have the Obsipiters Space Marines, a homebrew chapter but they are the successor chapter of the often forgotten about Raven Guard. This means of course that they are some sneaky beaky boys. Covert ops, smash and grabs, assassinations, ambushes and terrorizing the enemy is like walking and talking. Now when these bird boys were formed, it was to defend the Segmentum Tempestus. This is a fleet based chapter for the most part that recruits from a single world. But given they are to defend an entire Segmentum, they're pretty spread out. They split their chapter usually into companies that respond to attacks and defense of the Imperial planets or systems they are needed in. Their home planet is Sedonis, a heavy industrialized planet with all crime and poverty you would expect. But unlike many other hive cities, there is an unusually high amount of vigilantes that keep the gangs and underhive in check. Think of various independent acting psychotic batmen with no thought to the value of human life and you're pretty close. When one of these vigilantes makes a key tactic hitting critical targets and escaping into the shadows, the occipiters take a keen interest. Simply ambushing targets or sabotaging is good also and this might get you considered. The occipiters are interested in guerrilla warfare after all. But if you really want to make a cut, then they want a mind that can decipher what target is of key importance, the cleverness to take him out, and the extraction of said operative. Maximum damage with as little risk as possible. For those that make the cut, they are abducted by the biggest and most scary Batman there is in 40k and taken to their moon monastery for their trials, training, and indoctrination. During the trial though, not much is known about them. But it has been noticed that at a certain point some of the recruits return to the Underhive in teams as scouts in training to further test and hone their abilities. These scouts are closely watched over, of course, by the Occipiters. But it is known roughly half of those abducted come back for the test, and the rest, well... And roughly three-fourths of these scouts will survive this trial in the Underhive. With all that being said, the Underhive, like many super-industrialized worlds, hold these space marines in awe and fear, and with good reason. And some of the smarter gangs will actually pull their forces off the streets when the scouts are reported to be in the area. For the less smart ones, they will engage the scouts and will suffer no retaliation from the space marines themselves, but they will come out with significant losses. Significant losses that the smarter gangs that pulled their forces out, now outnumbering them two to one, will take full advantage of. Now having said all this, we come to what they are like. Well, if sitters are the best kind of space marines, they are massive shit-talking trolls. And yes, I mean the internet kind. They are used to provoking their enemies into making a mistake, either through taunting, poking, or prodding tactically, or making them feel the area safe when it's not. This has translated off the battlefield too, where you will find an incipitor making a smart-ass remark if you say something stupid or you do an action that is perceived as stupid. Given that the planet they are recruited from are your rough and tumble type mentally, you will find a rough and tumble dark sense of humor that is infused throughout this chapter. Unlike many chapters, this chapter is again based around guerrilla warfare and asymmetrical warfare. They're not going to charge into battle chain swords roaring into the front lines of an orc warg, or be the blunt hammer that shatters the chaos invasion and they're certainly not going to give the Dark Eldar a chance to ambush them. Instead, they are more likely to kill the Orc Warchief and then let the chaos and infighting consume the Wog with Imperial forces mopping them up. They are more likely to kill the Head Priest or close the portal that the chaos forces are using to let the demons in. And they are far more likely to be quote-unquote surprised by a Dark Eldar ambush only for the Dark Eldar to figure out all too late they are surrounded in an ambush the Incipitors have set for them. Now that is not to say they won't straight up one-on-one -on -one fight somebody, or even that they're not good at dueling or killing on the front lines. But when you're the size of a space marine and you could hide in a shadow way too small for you and not be detected, well you have a hell of a lot more options to play with as far as tactics at that point. 
Defensively speaking, they are experts at using the terrain and natural features of the land to their advantage every time. And many enemies find them infuriating to fight as they hit and disappear from many angles seemingly all at once, making many enemies charge headlong into ambushes. Their preferred weapons, of course, are claws and four swords. The chainsword is fine in a pinch, but it makes far too much noise as these tactics are more designed for, for hitting critical targets and disappearing quickly. They are also very fond of explosives and know how to rig just about anything to either be a booby trap or a bomb. For instance, the Occipiters were fighting off an orc wog. They had tried every tactic in the book and the Imperial forces were still being pushed back. So the Occipiters, being the Occipiters, came up with an ingenious idea. They captured the war chief's favorite Gretchen pet. They then shoved the little Gretchen full of as many explosives as they could with a detonator. They then released said Gretchen back to the wilds to find his way back to his boss. When the boss picked the Gretchen up to inspect why his favorite pet was twice the size and in massive screaming pain, the Incipitors detonated the explosives, tearing the top half of the war chief's body off and spreading it across the land. Then there was the Dark Eldar incursion. Now first we must understand that the Dark Eldar are sneaky and sadistic. They will happily torture a populace with radio broadcasts of Justin Beaver music as well as raids on the population centers to whip everyone into a state of being terrified. Their first tactic waited until the right time for one of these raids to kick off. This meant one third of the fleet would be on the planet and unable to come back immediately. The plan was very simple. Every time the Dark Eldar tried to do a raid, the Occipiters would show up, board a couple vessels, blow them to Kingdom Come, the Dark Elder would try and stop them of course, but the raids would come so fast and hard that it usually did damage the Occipiters' ships. Meanwhile on the ground, the Dark Eldar were also having issues there as well. Now normally Dark Eldar will land some of their ships, offload their guys, and raid the village. This is important as you can't take prisoners with you if you don't land your ships. So the Dark Eldar would land the ships, offload their guys, and start to do a raid on the town or a village. Only to find, nobody there, and as soon as they turned around, their ships were blowing up. Although they didn't have long to panic, as very large shadows started to emerge from buildings, doorways, and rooftops. Shadows with big bolter rifles, glowing monstrous swords, and electrified claws. Suffice it to say, the Dark Eldar were not used to being out-Dark eldar by the Occipiters. During this conflict, as much to 30 to 40,000 Dark Eldar forces were killed or maimed before they retreated, with very little in the way of slaves to show for their efforts. But the bad news is the Occipiters paid a heavy price as well. Out of three companies to pick up the fight and take it to the enemy, only four Marines returned alive. The last example of their battles is the Ghost Wars, so-called. This was between the Occipiters and the Forsworn. These battles would rage all over the system, and see hundreds of space marines dead on both sides, as well as uncountable amounts of Imperial Guard and civilians. The chapter master of the Occipiters, unfortunately, would pay a high price of his life before the final conflict. On an asteroid base the Forsworn had made their headquarters, where the Occipiters thought this might contain a psyker to relay information to other warbands and pull more warbands out of the system if they were attacked. The Occipiters came up with a cunning plan to slip into the asteroid and blow it from the inside. Ultimately, they were successful in this endeavor, and they destroyed the HQ, but it would cost the Occipiters the life of one of their captains and a hundred of his brattle brothers in doing so. This ended the threat of raids and piracy in the Segmentum Tempestus, at least for a while. Well, that's all I had on the Occipiters. I hope you enjoyed it, and have a great day, everybody.